can't see nothing. What I do? It's your fault. I, I always get this side. It's your strategy. You're smaller than me. Yeah. That makes sense. No, I'm actually not. It depends on what you're talking about. <laughs> Welcome back, guys. Here we are. Uh, as you can see, uh, Andrew's underneath the car. He's trying to do a little something. He's already complaining about the headers. All I ask you to do is take off this one header. Well, what, you want me to go get you a flashlight? Don't you come down here and take this header off. You I, you what are you better. talking? Don't talk to me like that. Andrew, you got an electric freaking ratchet. What are you complaining about? Well, that's down there in case you run out of oxygen, it can sense it. <laughs> that's true, that's true. All right, you got the header? Yeah. Look at that. So we kind of went ahead and got started uh, doing some boring stuff like the lower intake. So there's the lower. Uh, it's not, you know, it's not the prettiest, but it looks a hell of a lot better than what we had on it. So uh, right now we're just going to go back with the 19 pound injectors because we're not going to run any boost uh, right off the bat. But anyway, that's the lower intake, guys. Now what we're doing is just getting the headers off so that we don't, you know, scratch these new heads up whenever we go back with those and also just makes more room and we're changing these headers out anyway so right. now what we're going to do is go ahead and get the cam installed and the reason why we want to do that is obviously so we can go ahead and plug these holes we don't want to get any debris down in here because we're going to have to be scraping and cleaning here in just a few minutes all right guys so before you stick your camshaft in just line your crankshaft up with your keyway straight up and down that's going to be top dead center right here so from here on we're just going to kind of lift this up out of the way and we're going to slide our cam in put the time of chain on it and we should be good. This isn't gonna be like a full tutorial on how to rebuild an engine or, or start back from this point. So I guess what I'm trying to say is this, I'm not trying to teach you how to do all this because I don't want it to be on me. So uh, there's plenty, like LMR has uh, videos to show you how to, to you know install like a time of chain and a cam and stuff like that. So I don't really wanna be the one to do that. Before we get to it, guys, uh, I don't have any assembly lube, so I'm not gonna use any. Uh, the only time that I use assembly lube is if like I'm building an engine and it, it won't be run for a couple months. We're just going to put this thing in, uh, put a little bit of oil on it, and we should be good to go. <laughs> uh, like I said, we don't have any assembly lube, so we're just going to uh, use a little bit of this, put it on the camshaft. This thing will be running probably, what, tomorrow night? Yeah, probably. So it'll be all right. Plus, we'll pour some oil on, on the valley right here and let it run down on top of the camshaft and everything else before we start it up, before we put the lower intake on it. So don't freak out, guys. I will say this though, if you're if you're building an engine and it's not going to be running for a while, definitely use assembly lube. 100% do that because this stuff will drip off over time and it's not going to do you any good. All right, let's get started. I will tell you this, uh, on, on this camshaft, if you buy it new, they're going to come with two dial pins and you want to run the short one. So all you want to do is just drive it in there. You don't have to do anything special. It'll stay locked in. So just do that. And we're going to wipe this cam off. It's got a little bit of dust on it. I'm going to get this thing popped in. TFS stage three. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> the gear goes in front because we don't kiss boys around here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. This Lucas is going to be all right. <laughs> you know, now that I think about it, this shit's probably better than assembly lube because it ain't going nowhere. It's going to be on It sure ain't going nowhere. No, shit. Look at that. You got spider webs coming off of it. Yeah, we probably shouldn't be using this, but it's okay. <laughs> We're going to do it anyway. Admittedly, I don't think we've ever used it before. <laughs> yeah, but... I, I, thought, I thought I had used it, but now I'm like, I've never used it. <laughs> so, uh, so, we're just going to lift this up out of the way. And we're going to get this thing started. Be careful not to hit your bearings. Because mine are in such good shape. <laughs> and once you... We should get that in and drop this back down. Let's see if I can do it without the. Nope. And there you go. 
let's go ahead and clean up some of this stuff real quick like and uh, then we'll drop the lifters in remember guys we do have brand new lifters so we're going to get those in too it's just a stinking face <laughs> andrew where's my scraper at wherever you put it at you just had it you got my scraper no i don't have your scraper i think you play in there. Don't, you don't need no help losing that. Also, if you're going to be scraping and you still have your oil pan on, make sure you lay something down here because, I mean, the oil pan's right there. So you will knock stuff down into it. Yeah, my oil pump got locked up doing that. On your timing chain, you just want to make sure that these line up. So that's it. Your two little circles, just like that. There we go. All right, guys. Well, that's pretty much it on the timing chain that'll get your cam in here so you can go ahead and put your lifters in and from here we're just going to do a little bit of cleaning so we'll just jump to a time lapse and then we'll once we start putting the heads on we'll get back with you completely forgot to uh, do a time lapse but luckily we really didn't do anything other than spray the timing chain cover the the block uh we put the lifters in just clean some stuff up that's all right now uh andrew's just tightening up a, a couple bolts here just to get this time of chain cover secured all right guys so uh next up we've got to assemble the heads i'll talk you through that a little bit because that's really the the important part of this build we slap the cam in it that's cool but these heads we really want to look over them make sure everything's good take our time with them and i want to talk to you about those and really kind of how to install them all right i'll get back with you guys in just a minute we're going to go ahead and get this head ready as you can tell, I'm a little little stuffy. My allergies are wearing me out right now. But that's okay. We're going to push through this. So what we're going to do is show you guys how to set up your new heads. you got a set of these SVE heads from LMR. This is what you need to know about them. Me and Andrew both, uh, we looked at these and we're like, well, what do we do with these? So it took us a minute and we finally figured out the combination. So let's go ahead and show you first off how your guide plates work. So as you can see, you got two different styles here. The way they're going to work is like this. So they're going to lock in together like that. It took us a little while, kind of like a puzzle. So they slide in like that. That's where your push rods are going to come through. And you can adjust them in and out and up and down a little bit. So let's go ahead and do that now. Now we're going to use just a touch of red Loctite. I, don't, I mean just a little bit. I personally don't like to use a lot of Loctite or any Loctite going into aluminum with steel because the steel will bind into the aluminum my personal experience i like uh i like to use loctite on steel on steel uh more than aluminum and steel but we're going to use a, just a touch right now now don't tighten anything up just yet you're going to have to shift these plates around So the best thing to do is just leave them loose for right now. And what I have found to work as far as lining up the hole. So uh, you can see that the guide plate is a little off center of the hole. So you want to center that up. Well, about the best way to do that is push them as far over to the side as possible. Lock it down. Same thing here. Push it over. Lock it down. You're going to have a little bit of a gap. So that looks pretty good. All right, now what we've got to do is torque these down. So uh, 45 foot-pounds seems to be the number. And here's what they look like. Like I said, you can make adjustments if you need to afterwards. It's not that big of a deal. These heads are cut for half inch bolts, so they'll work with a Windsor. So what do we have to do here? Well, they make these bushings that pop in. Uh, Trick Flow sells them, LMR has them on their site. Plus, like I said, it's a bushing. You can tell how tight that fits in comparison to that. Also, on these heads, the one thing that we found that we might wanna touch on are these little burrs. Now that's really hard for you guys to see, I'm sure. I'm gonna show you why it's important to cut these burrs out. All right, Andrew, get the camera down here close to where I can see it. I don't know if that showed up on camera, but uh, 
all these little burrs of metal right here are really thin so they're gonna get hot first and what happens is they start glowing red and they will pre-detonate so they'll cause the fuel mixture in your cylinder to detonate so that's a bad thing we don't want that so we're just gonna clean that up really simple like you just want to be careful not to you know go up inside the threads and really mess anything up so all you want to do is get in here just ever so slightly touch this and it pretty much just breaks off so it's always a good idea to look at your heads pull the heads apart if you know what you're doing or send them somewhere and get them checked out i have watched a few videos of people you know buying really expensive heads and they get them and the valves leak you know they at, at least at, at a minimum need like a lapping like a valve lapping we've looked them over so we're going to go ahead and put them on a car we've already got the block clean got everything good we'll put a head gasket on this thing and lay this thing over here make sure that your dial pins are in your block and try not to slide the head There you go, just like that. Reality's finally setting in. Uh, got some nice heads here. All right, guys, let's go ahead and get our bolts in. So we are gonna be running ARP bolts. Let's go ahead and get those in. Okay, so one more tip for you guys. Uh, always use your washers, of course, but uh, if you don't know, there's a flat side and a beveled side of your washer, and the bevel side goes up like that. The flat side will go down and you should probably <laughs> put your anti-seize on after you put your washer on but we don't do shit right around here mm -mm. everything we do we do bass ackwards so we are probably not going to get uh really any further tonight it's it's late it's like 2 30 in the morning right now it's so like three three o'clock in the morning but we'll come back tomorrow andrew's going to come back over and we're going to start torquing everything down putting the roller rockers on put the front of the motor back together and uh, we should probably fire it up tomorrow i'm sure all right guys we'll catch back up with you tomorrow let me show you what zach has done yeah this dude just bought a 14 gt500 Got the whole crew over here. Whatever. Andrew just drove the uh, GT500. What you think, Andrew? You can get on it, man. But it definitely it don't struggle quite as much as these fox yeah. bodies to get <laughs> to get up. Yeah. So uh, you want to show them that? Show them, baby. All right. You gonna tell them what it is? It's a flower. So we went ahead and put this head on. Uh, everything is torqued down. It's all good. Rockers are done. So we're gonna show you now how to go about doing that on this side now. There is some things we need to talk about. That was the main reason for going ahead and installing this head over here just to see if there was uh, going to be anything that kind of stood out to us. And sure enough, uh, there's some there's some issues, or not issues, but there's some pointers that we need to kind of need to cover with these uh, guide plates right here. So let's go ahead and get started on that, and I'll show you how I adjust those out. Ugh. What we're going to do is 70 on the bottom and 75 up top. We're going to start with 50, so I'll keep this simple. We're at 50 right now. All right, we're gonna go from 50 on up to 70. We got a sealed motor, so. Yeah, so now let's talk about these guide plates you remember earlier in the video i showed you how these things kind of mesh together right here they're like a like a puzzle but if you pay attention to the tip to the center of the stud you can see that this hole in the center of the, the uh, push rod is not exactly centered up so what that's going to do is cause your rocker arm to sit off to the side see that guys that's not going to work so we're going to have to loosen this up and slide this plate one way or the other 
So uh, what we're seeing here is if you leave the stud just loose a little bit, you can kind of push on these rockers and make that push rod move the guide plate a little bit. So it's looking pretty good. That's actually really straight right there. So we don't have to do anything else with that. Then you just want to hold the plate. And there you go. Same thing right here. I have to move that. Looks good. All right. Moving right along. You look good. Yeah, look pretty good. It's better, better than some of the shit I've built in <laughs> years past, I can promise you. And I, I remember a time back when I built the, the white Mustang that I had. After I got done, all the rocker arms, everyone, like one was sitting this way and one was sitting that way. And it never occurred to me that the guide plates could be off a little bit, causing these rockers to sit ever so slightly one way or the other. But that's obviously what it was. Like I said, guys, we all live and learn, right? We're not born knowing everything, unless, of course, you're Andrew. Yeah, I thought you beat me to it. I, was... I know, see? I got man hands. I mean, what you want me to say? I'm not a girl. You got Bruce Jenner hands. Oh, yeah? Mm-hmm. Well, before the surgery. <laughs> the Olympian Bruce Jenner, you got them hands. You damn right. So I'm going to show you a simplified version of adjusting these rocker arms out. Uh, because if you're like me and you're not very smart, um, you get confused whenever, like, which valve is supposed to be open and which valve is supposed to be closed, right? Um, so, let's just do this the simple way. Uh, Andrew, show them right there on the lifter. So anyway, we know that's on the base circle. So what we want to do here, spin the push rod with your hand and spin this. And as soon as you feel a little bit of resistance, that's the stopping point. Now, everybody does this differently. I'm going to go a quarter turn. And if, they're, if they rattle or if we need any more, we'll go a half turn total. But for right now, we're just going to do a quarter turn. So let's wrench somewhere about there. There you go. And what you want to do is come in and lock this down. The thing I like about a quarter turn is you can come in and lock down the center. And then you have room to give it a little bump afterwards. So put you just a touch over a quarter turn and that's the way I like to do it. So you can see this lifter moving. All we're, all we're doing is waiting on this to come all the way down and stop moving. Go. All right. And then right. stop moving. It's on the base circle of the cam. And same procedure. It's really simple, guys. Don't overthink it. Don't get into the hole like you have to know which valve is open and which one's closed. I never learned that. I thought it was too complicated. <laughs> Probably because I'm just not smart enough. But hey. More than likely. Um... You know, just keep it simple, though. I mean, so many so many people try to tell you to learn it this way because that's the way they were taught. And they want to make it sound more complicated because they want to make themselves sound smarter. But, you know, ultimately, you just got to get the job done. If so they don't come can. off, you're going to be all right. Yeah, do it one <laughs> at a time. You'll be all right. Quarter turn. And this will be the last one i show you guys. We're going to go ahead and get busy on this. Lock down the center. Give it a little extra bump, and that's it. All right, guys, we're going to go ahead and finish this up. Nothing else to really show you here. And uh, before too long, hopefully, we'll have this thing running. Probably not tonight. It'll be daylight <laughs> by the time we get it running. But. This thing's getting loose, isn't it, uh, Chevy Logic? The looser it is, the better it runs? Yeah. Hey, this thing's pretty loose, by the way. The rear end well. get real loose, then. <laughs> <laughs> they go all over the place. What are you talking about? Guys' rear end? Chevrolet rear end. All right, guys, we'll go ahead and catch up with you. And we're done.